NBC 15 News at 11 starts now. Now at 11, breaking news. NBC just announced in a special report the female shooter in this week's mass shooting in California posted a statement of support for ISIS. Plus, hearts are heavy in Colorado as a fallen officer is laid to rest one week after he was killed during a shootout near Planned Parenthood. And a local family needs your help to find their dog, Stella, who went missing on Thanksgiving Day. We'll have more in just a little bit. Breaking news at this hour, we are learning more about the motive behind the mass shooting in San Bernardino, California, that left 14 people dead and more than 20 wounded. NBC News has just learned that the wife of the couple who carried out the attacks pledged allegiance to ISIS on a Facebook post just before the attack. NBC's Jay Gray has the latest. A stunning discovery in the case this morning. NBC News has learned Tashveen Malik pledged allegiance to the leader of ISIS in a Facebook post just before she and her husband, Saeed Farouk, allegedly killed 14 and wounded more than 20 during an attack at the Inland Regional Center Wednesday. This took days, weeks, if not months to plan out. There's nothing impulsive about this shooting at all. Investigators continue to pour over evidence pulled from the couple's Redlands home, where, according to federal officials, there's evidence that Farouk had been, quote, talking with people in the U.S. and overseas during the past year who showed an interest in radical jihad. But NBC News has learned the couple tried to cover their digital footprint, destroying computer hard drives and cell phones prior to carrying out the mass shooting. And as investigators try to understand why, so does Farouk's family. His brother-in-law sat down overnight with NBC's Lester Holt. Did somebody brainwash him? Something snap him? And why would the couple choose to carry out this attack and leave behind their six-month-old daughter? Questions and grief that still fill this tight-knit community. Jay Gray, NBC News, San Bernardino, California. Of course, this is a developing story, and we will bring you updates on our evening newscasts. Meantime, a cafe in Paris reopened for business today, three weeks after gunmen killed five people there and injured another three seriously. La Bonne Bière Cafe was one of several venues in the French capital targeted by gunmen in a series of extremist attacks that claimed the lives of 130 people last month. The cafe manager said, it has been repainted, of course, and redecorated to, quote, erase the signs of this nightmare. This is your weather authority forecast. Beautiful weather coming up for this afternoon and into tomorrow as well. A few more clouds on Sunday, but 47 degrees for the high this afternoon. That's well above average. And looks like we will have more mild weather for your Saturday and even into next week. High temperatures expected in the 40s through at least Thursday of next week. I'll have that forecast for you coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you. Pretty quiet conditions here, but a different story out west where heavy snow is falling in parts of California's Sierra Mountains. Snow blanketed area roads causing travel problems for many drivers last night. At one point, a vehicle with slick tires and no chains got stuck, causing a massive backup for about an hour. Making news around the nation, authorities have arrested a man wanted for a shooting and shooting a Maryland police officer in the face early this morning. Police say the officer was standing in a wooded area investigating a report of suspicious activity when he was shot. The officer, a 10-year veteran of the department, is said to be in stable condition. A Colorado Springs police officer killed in a shooting at a Colorado Springs Planned Parenthood will be laid to rest this afternoon. 44-year-old Garrett Swayze was killed in an exchange of gunfire with the suspect Robert Deere last Friday. Two civilians were also killed in the attack and nine others were injured, including five officers. Thousands are expected at Officer Swayze's funeral today, which is open to the public. In our continuing coverage now, a nearly six-hour standoff ended peacefully in Baraboo after a man barricaded himself inside his home. Police were called to a home near 11th and Tuttle Street around 8 last night. 61-year-old David Schlow and a woman were fighting. The woman left and told police Schlow was drunk and armed with a rifle and handgun. He surrendered to police at 1.30 this morning and was taken into custody. 
A Sauk County Elementary School will be closed for a possible outbreak of a stomach illness. A letter was sent to parents of students who attend Tower Rock Elementary in Prairie de Sac. The school says more students than usual were out sick yesterday because of a gastrointestinal illness. The school is working with the Sauk County Health Department to monitor the situation. Family and friends are gathering today to honor a man who spent the majority of his life serving Wisconsin. A memorial service will be held for Justice Patrick Crooks at four in the Wisconsin Senate chambers. The late Supreme Court Justice passed away unexpectedly from natural causes in September. He was 77 years old. New numbers show the median household income fell in two-thirds of Wisconsin counties, including Dane, the Census Bureau released data from 2009 through 2014. Vilas County saw the steepest decline at 13.3%. Milwaukee County saw a 10.3% drop, and Dane County saw a 5.2% drop to $62,303. The country saw its median income drop by 7.5% to 53482 an unfortunate series of events separated a Sun Prairie man from his very best friend. Brett Farrow and his beloved dog Stella got into a car crash Thanksgiving and Stella ran away. Now Brett's family is hoping flyers in Sun Prairie, Marshall and Lake Mills will help find her. NBC 15's Christy Batista has the story. A perk of the ears, a turn of the head. That's what Brett Farrow got when he asked Stella if she wanted to go for a ride. Yeah, I take Stella everywhere I go. Um, she's pretty much my best friend. But that all changed Thanksgiving morning. Stella escaped from the scene and we haven't been able to locate her since then. Brett was driving home with Stella when he got into the crash on I-94 westbound between the Lake Mills and Marshall exits. The car rolled several times. The back window shattered essentially and I think that's how she had escaped from from the car. He hasn't seen her since and says he's lost a member of his family. Me and my wife don't have any kids, um, so she's definitely our, our first child, that's for sure. She even helped Brett propose to his wife. I've had her for about three years. Um, she's been the best dog I could ask for. Stella is microchipped, but so far Brett has only had one lead, thanks to a Facebook page called Finding Stella. Someone thought they spotted someone in a white pickup truck trying to um, get a dog into their truck, and we haven't heard from that person, and we don't know if it was their dog, uh, if it was possibly Stella. And after a tough week, he remains hopeful that she's out there waiting to come home. She's just always there to warm your heart when you're not, when you're not feeling the best. And that was Christy Batista reporting. So sad. We really hope Stella gets home safely. I think she's probably in somebody's house and they just don't know who to call. Yeah. Anytime you do find a stray animal, always great to call your county humane society. Mm -hmm. Stella says, or actually Brett says, Stella still may be scared from the crash. So if anyone sees her, to contact him right away. His information can be found on the Finding Stella Facebook page. So a link to that is on our page, NBC15.com. Just click on News Link.